Toyota just hit the industry with something extraordinary, a groundbreaking engine that could kill the electric vehicle or EV market. We're talking about something that no car maker has ever done before, a water-powered engine. Yes, you heard that right. It's not science fiction. It's the real deal, and Toyota is the mastermind behind it. While the world is busy making overpriced EVs that are killing the middle class, Toyota just found the ultimate solution to all of our needs. Unlike conventional fossil fuels or even the lithium and cobalt required for electric vehicles or EV batteries, water is easily available and doesn't involve environmentally harmful extraction processes. This concept promises immense benefits in over traditional engines and even modern EVs, but the challenge has always been making it practical and reliable for everyday use. And that's the gap Toyota aims to bridge with their groundbreaking technology. Now, let's get under the hood of Toyota's water engine, which functions similarly to an H2O generator, but is tweaked for better daily vehicle use. Imagine the hydrogen combustion engine like in the Toyota Mirai. But here's the twist. Instead of using pre-processed hydrogen, Toyota's engine makes it on the fly. Through electrolysis, the engine breaks down water into hydrogen and oxygen, using electrodes in a water tank that zap it with with high voltages. Here's the cool part. Because the hydrogen is generated on demand from water in the tank, there's no need for those bulky, heavy tanks used in fuel cell electric vehicles or FCEVs and other hydrogen engines. And when it comes to powering the car, hydrogen is sent to the engine where it combusts similarly to the compressed natural gas or CNG. With just a few tweaks needed to accommodate the high combustibility of hydrogen, this also means you will get crazy range estimates along with extremely low maintenance costs. Toyota has also filled a patent with full documentation about this engine, which I will tell you about in a minute. When we talk about the environment, Toyota's water engine is like a superhero with almost zero emissions. It's not just cleaner than traditional engines, it outshines EVs in convenience. Imagine being able to refuel your car with distilled water. It's incredibly cheap and widely available. The tech could drastically reduce our dependence on oil and the dirty business of extracting rare materials for EV batteries, which currently cause significant environmental harm. Here's where Toyota really gets ahead. Hydrogen is notoriously tricky and expensive to store safely, but water is no biggie. You could theoretically use any plastic container for a water-powered vehicle, which is a stark contrast to the high-maintenance, costly storage hydrogen demands. Plus, producing and storing hydrogen is not only a wallet drainer for consumers, but it also hasn't taken off because, frankly, it's a logistical nightmare. Who would want their car to blow up? Now, if you're worried about power, let's put those fears to rest. This water-powered engine could potentially belt out more power than gasoline engines. It's safer, too. There's no volatile fuel constantly in the car, significantly reducing the risk of explosive accidents. But why will the CEO of the world's biggest car maker be against EVs? It all started with a Kia Toyota, the former CEO, who was a titan in the industry, but had some reservations about jumping fully into the EV bandwagon. You see, Toyota wasn't shy about his skepticism. He famously said, people involved in the auto industry are largely a silent majority. That silent majority is wondering whether EVs are really okay to have as a single option, but they think it's the trend so they can't speak out loudly. For Toyota, it wasn't just about EVs, it was about tackling carbon emissions head on. He believed in a diversified approach. Hybrids, plug-ins, hydrogen fuel cells, and sure, EVs as a part of the mix. Now, I've been a combustion engine guy my whole life, so I get where he's coming from. But Toyota had a point about practicality, too. He was concerned about shortages of materials like lithium and the infrastructure needed to support a full EV shift. And let's be real, the sticker shock on the new EVs today is no joke. Despite the pushback, Toyota did put money into electrification, a cool $70 billion, though it was more conservative than some competitors. But Toyota's message was clear, diversity in powertrain technology was key. You see, Toyota wasn't shy about his skepticism. He famously said, people involved in the auto industry are largely a silent majority. The silent majority is wondering whether EVs are really okay to have as a single option. But you think it's the trend, so you can't speak out loudly. Toyota has recently filed a patent for a water-cooled hydrogen combustion engine, which was un 
uncovered by CARBUS in the records of the United States Patent and Trademark Office. This patent outlines a unique system that incorporates water injection valves into the intake ports of a combustion chamber. The technology is particularly geared toward a hydrogen fuel engine, which fundamentally differs from the system found in Toyota's Mirai, a vehicle powered by a hydrogen fuel cell. The patent indicates a distinct approach. Instead of creating electricity through hydrogen to power an electric motor, as in the Mirai, the new patented engine burns hydrogen directly in the combustion chambers, like a conventional internal combustion engine. According to the patent documentation, Toyota's engine design allows for the injection of water either when the intake valve opens or before it closes. This method ensures that water isn't continuously sprayed into the combustion chamber, which could lead to inefficiency or potential engine damage. The role of water here is crucial. It acts as a coolant within the high temperature environment of a hydrogen combustion engine. When hydrogen burns, it does so at a higher temperature than gasoline, which can lead to a range of problems, including pre-ignition and knocking. Water injection mitigates these issues by absorbing some of the combustion heat, thus preventing abnormal combustion phenomena. In this design, each cylinder is equipped with two water injection valves. One valve injects water into the first intake port, while the second does so into the second intake port. The patent illustrates that one valve functions during the opening of the intake valve and the other as it closes, providing a dual-stage cooling process that could effectively control the combustion temperatures. The electronic control unit unit, or ECU, plays a pivotal role in this system. It continually monitors the engine's operational state and determines the precise quantity of water to be injected at any given time. The sophistication of this setup lies in Toyota's ability to precisely control the internal environment of a hydrogen combustion engine, which is known for its high performance, but also its tendency to run much higher temperatures than petrol or diesel engine. The filling of this patent doesn't stand alone. Toyota's commitment to hydrogen goes beyond passenger vehicles. Earlier in March 2023, the company announced the development of new electrolysis equipment to produce hydrogen. This system uses technology from the Mirai, including the fuel cell stack, to electrolyze water, signalizing Toyota's intention to use hydrogen broadly for vehicles and for industrial purposes. The equipment will first see deployment at a Denso Fukushima Corporation plant, where it will produce hydrogen for local use. Toyota's strategy is clear. It's not just about creating hydrogen-powered vehicles, it's about creating an ecosystem where hydrogen is a central player. The newly developed electrolysis equipment benefits from the extensive experience Toyota has gathered from the Mirai and other fuel cell endeavors. It can produce approximately 8 kilograms of hydrogen per hour, requiring about 53 kilowatt hours of energy per kilogram of hydrogen. While the energy input is significant, the goal is to source it from renewable energy, making the the process more sustainable in the long run. Moreover, Toyota has used its FCEV, or fuel cell electric vehicle development knowledge, to enhance the electrolysis equipment's durability. For example, the use of titanium in the stack separators, a material chosen for its high corrosion resistance, ensures that the equipment can maintain performance for extended periods, with the current designs aiming for nearly a decade of continuous operation. While Toyota continues to develop electric vehicles, it's clear from these patents and development projects that the company sees a diversified future of mobility. Hydrogen, with its promise of high energy density and fast refueling times, coupled with an abundant source like water, positions itself as an attractive alternative or complement to battery electric vehicles, especially in scenarios where batteries may fall short, such as long-haul transport or high-performance sports car. Would you buy this water engine? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Toyota is not alone in this venture. An Iranian scientist managed to convert his Pugiat 405 to run on water. That's right. Using a bit of ingenuity, Aldin Kesemi transformed his ride into a water-fueled marvel. If a single person with limited resources can achieve this, imagine what Toyota with its deep pockets and engineering prowess could bring to the table. From an economic standpoint, it's no contest. Kesemi's Pugat 405 now running on water could achieve between 30 and 40 miles per gallon. That's an efficiency gasoline engines could only dream of. We could see water engines offering 80 plus miles per gallon without breaking a sweat, making the operating costs ridiculously low. Now, here's the big question. 
Is the water engine the future? In theory, yes, but it's complex. The current tech is experimental and needs to prove its metal in real-world condition. Plus, there's a juggernaut of vested interest from oil and lithium industries that could throw a spanner in the works.